What's happening people, Dan Lawless here and I'm back with another transfer video. We're gonna try and make sense of what the hell is going on with Maxi Gomez. The latest on Marco Arnautovic and is he leaving, isn't he? How much, what the hell's going on with Arnautovic? And a possible alternative to Gomez if that doesn't happen, Andrea Belletti. But before we get in, Andrea, I think it's Andrea, whatever the hell, before we get into that, this transfer video is sponsored by Unibet. If you want to check that out, they've got some great articles and transfer stories and bits and pieces like that. If you want to support us, please click the link in the description below and just um, check out their site, really. That's all it takes, but it'll help us out a great deal if you just click the link and, and have a look. Nothing else to it. Uh, but let's get into it. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Nicky's just been so bang on it. He's been relentless. So uh, now, as we've agreed, I'd do some stuff today. And yeah, it's been making my head spin, to be honest. This Maxi Gomez stuff, it's doing my head in a bit. I don't know if anyone else feels the same. Some people feel it's exciting, and I suppose so. But we don't know if any of this is true. There's just so many of these news sites and, and places all contradicting each other. You know, you see, like, one site, like, say, flipping Sky Sports will put out one story saying, yep, he's going to Valencia. He's definitely happening. He's going to Valencia. Then some other Spanish... Uh, source will go, West Ham have agreed terms and, and he's agreed terms, he's agreed personal, medical to happen, all this crap. And it's just constantly like this. He's going Valencia, he's going West Ham, he's going Valencia, he's going West Ham. I mean, jeez. It's it's like the Carlos Baca saga, but on crack, honestly. But, uh, I mean, look, let's see. The, the, latest, the latest story had him last night, yesterday, agreeing... The fee with uh, Celta Vigo agreeing with Valencia for like 16 million euros and uh, a player going the other way and another player on loan. That was said to be done. We weren't getting Valencia. Then last minute, boom, Husilos and West Ham come out of nowhere. They're going to hijack the deal. We're going to hijack it, right? And uh, that's that's what was coming out. We, we've been with, now with the Anatovic stuff going out, on which we'll get more into we're going to just get rid of him quick as possible take that money bang release clause for gomez the latest is that apparently we're looking to pay the release clause of 45 million pound for maxi gomez but it's 50 50 apparently it's up in the air whether he'll come to us or come to them um go to valencia it's it's all up in the air there's talks that he wants to stay in spain there um there's talks that his agent wants Valencia to match what we're offering financially, sign-on fee, wages, all of that. I'd be very interested if they can actually do that. We've got the spending power of the Premier League. So can money overcome his sort of home comfort that he's got? Um, I mean, look, I, I can understand a lot of people are just, you know what, Let's just forget about him and move on, which I completely sympathise with. It is exhausting. But at the same time, it's just because there's all these bloody stories coming out. If we didn't have all of these stories about him, we wouldn't know what's going on. They'd just be doing their thing behind the scenes and we'd either sign him or not sign him. But it's just because we, the modern day we live in, you know, you're not just, you, you're just getting, when you're on social media, you're just getting all this stuff on your feed constantly. It's not like whether you have to check up on teletext or you just read it in the paper. It's just coming at you all the time, counteracting stories. So, yeah, I mean, look, if Pellegrini wants him that bad, it seems like it would be worth the effort and it would be great if we can get him. If he really, really doesn't want to come, then we should move on and look at alternatives. But, yeah, all we can do is, is wait and see. Like I so said, we've, um, we've got the pulling power of you know the the financial side of things and we can pay more and we can appeal to his agent uh, apparently we've worked with his agent or his agency before which is a, a bit of a link um or valencia or Celt vigo's people one of those things and yeah i think just paying that 45 million if you can slap that down then that's a lot of money for Celt vigo even if you want to maybe just pay, put stick five million above it. Like if we want him that bad and we, we want to get this player in and we've got these problems with Arnie, we need to replace him. Obviously, Pellegrini rates him. Who Silos rates him. Yeah, he's, he's got to be worth going after. So you've got to back your manager. And 
let's just see what happens of it. But uh, yeah, I don't know if any of you guys are just getting burnt out of it as much as I am. But uh, the latest story just suggests that it seems like it could still be going Valencia's way, but West Ham representatives have gone to Spain and um, looking to really try and hammer this deal through and do what they can. So they've, they've gone there in person. And let's just see what happens. Hopefully they bring the player back. It will be very satisfying. It will make up for it all in the end if we get him. And um, hopefully he turns out to be good. Could you imagine all of this? Like It would be typical West Ham if uh, we go we go through all of this and like he turns into like another sort of Caleri like we'd be like he maxes out at two goals but like I said I've got faith in Pellegrini and Husilos let's hope they get their man but if they don't there's an alternative player that we are said to be looking at we have alternative Andrea Belletti a highly rated striker number nine from Torino and it's, it's, he seems to be a good player. I don't know much about him. As you like I said, I ain't got, I've barely got time to what, like, follow all the Premier League, you know, let alone watch the bloody Serie A, the La Liga, the flipping uh, French League, uh, League, League, French League One, all of them things. I don't know how people have all that time, but they have time. Some people just play Football Manager or watch or play FIFA and get their information from there. I don't even have time for that. But, he seems, what I'm reading, he seems to be highly rated. I've done the old YouTube, as you do. And he seems to be a little bit in the mould of uh, Marco Anatovic, physically, not uh, attitude-wise, I hope. And it seems like he could be a good replacement. Apparently, he was rated at, like, there was talking about, like, a couple of seasons ago, he was rated at, like, £90 million, which I think must have been when he scored 28 goals in 38 games in 16-17 season. Uh, last season, 17 goals in 39 games. And then the other season before that, 13 goals in 35 games. Um, so seems to be a good player. Can work off the ball. Good movement. Seems to be quite strong. He's got some good size to him. So that could be a good replacement for an Anatovic. They're talking about 50 million euros, which is quite a bit of money. But then again, if we can, if we can get a player like that in and Rondon, which I think we're still very much in, in the uh, driving seat for Rondon, then I think we're looking good and we can keep hold of Hernandez. I feel like we need we do need three strikers. If we really want to be serious about having a good cup run, we need some, some depth. And we all know what West Ham are like with, with injuries. If we can keep Hernandez for one more season, then... I'm happy. And and all respect to Hernandez because as much as he does want to go and he wants to go to America, he's just he's happy to stay if that's what we need and we don't sell him. He's not pushing for a move. He's keeping his head down and he's getting stuck in training. Um but yeah, before I get into who isn't doing that, but Belotti seems like a decent alternative if we can't get the first choice of Gomez, we can get Belotti. Um so yeah, I'm happy with that. I trust that Husilos and Pellegrini know more about football than me, so I'm not going to second guess him too much. And like I said, I don't know too much. I haven't followed these players too much. So, yeah, let's just wait and see what happens. I'm not panicking yet. I'm just a bit burnt out and uh, over the, the constant contradiction. Like, honestly, like all of these different news sites that post these different stories, someone's got to be making it up. I mean, a lot of the stuff that they get, it's all like second and third hand information or some of its agents just talking to like playing different sides off each other and putting all this different information out to raise the price and raise the price and and just raise that interest. Um, so you can't really put too, you've got to take everything with a massive pinch of salt. Don't take anything that comes out as gospel. Even nothing I say, like I said, I don't present this like I'm in the nose, this is my information. I'm just giving you my reaction and my opinion based off of what's out there. Um, so yeah, anyway, moving on. And now of it. Marko Anatovic. I know Nicky's spoke a lot about him on the channel. Um, and yeah, it's it's just the the headache we didn't want. We we thought that we'd give him we'd give him a new contract and he would shut up after then. Like he'd keep his head down. He's moved to China. It looked like a missed opportunity and he was just gonna get his head down and just focus on playing in the Premier League and proving himself. Now summer's come, his brother's back up to his old tricks again, talking, 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 money hungry, uh, and Anatovic is obviously letting him do it, and he wants to go. 
And this is the thing, like football, at the, at the end of the day, it's a job, right? It's a job to people. I, I, I can't take it too personally if, if someone wants to leave, but I think it's how you do, how you go about it. There's a way of doing it. And I said, Hernandez, complete and utter professional. Respect that so much. Whereas Anatovic, yeah, I've, I've heard he's got gambling problems. I don't know if that's true. And he maybe wants one last big payday. But, like, the way you do it, you, you just weaken our hand. Like, when you just do all this crap and you talk in, this, in the news and, and, and stuff like that, and you make it so public, you just weaken, you weaken our hand from a, from a selling aspect. And then his brother talks about how, oh, you know, he's, he's helped West Ham and West Ham, you know, can't hold on to him like that. And he's done all of this for them and he's kept him in the Premier League and all of this stuff. And, like, we owe him. We owe him this this move. And it's, has he not been, like, rewarded? Was he not given a new contract? Did we not reward him with a new contract? Has he really done everything? I mean, I mean, brilliant, brilliant, one of our best players. But when you look at it consistent, consistently, he's acting like he's this 20-goal-a-season player. It's, it's, it's not that. Um, I, mean, I think his brother's an absolute prick, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so they're talking about us accepting like a 22 uh, million, million euro flipping deal or pound deal from Shanghai Liang. I know Nicky talked about a 40 million pound thing, which would have been or 40 euro. I'd snap their hands off. But it looks like it's not true. And they said that we're looking to get rid of him quick so we can get on with our other business, which... It's, I'm in two minds. Uh, I mean, me and Dave Walker was talking on Twitter yesterday about potentially just holding on to him. If we don't get what we want for him, hold on to him, put him in the reserves, put him on the sideline, him, whatever, and tell someone's willing to pay what we value the player at, which I, you know, I totally agree with. Like, this is the thing that worries me. If we keep having these situations where players kick and stomp their feet and they want to leave... And we just sell them to get rid of them. We just sell them quick and we sell them on the cheap. And it's just that easy. Then we're, everyone's going to do it. We've got Declan Rice and Issa Diop, right? Getting quite a lot of interest from other clubs. How, what kind of example does it set to them? Where it just looks like if you just want to leave, you can just spit your dummy out, throw a tantrum, protest, whatever. And we will just move you on as soon as possible for whatever fee someone offers us, which I think is disastrous in the long term. And you've got like play uh, teams like Leicester and um, Palace, you know, standing firm, saying, no, we want these ridiculous sums of money. It's, and as well, look at Liver, uh, Newcastle. They've just sold Perez to Leicester for 30 million. And that's what I was saying. Like, whatever you say about Mike Ashley... He is so good at selling bang average players for decent prices. But we can't even sell our best players for, 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 for overinflated prices, let alone what they're actually worth. We always undersell. That being said, with all the Gomez stuff going on, if shifting an out of it quick can just help get this Gomez deal wrapped up and delivered, I'm willing to bite the bullet in this instance, dis, in, uh, despite everything I've just said. As much as I don't want to see us sell him on the cheap and and cave in like that, I think just the greater priority right now is getting in a striker that is going to come in and isn't going to be, you know, looking to leave and just will get stuck into training and, and look to the season and be a team player and, and as a striker that Pellegrini wants. So I think for the greater good, um, bite the bullet, just just get rid of him. I've changed my tune a bit, but just with developments, I mean, again, all these developments, it could be complete fiction and what I've been reading might not be true. But if it is true, if that is the case that we're looking to just go and slap down the 45 million release clause and, we, and that money would help, then take the 22 million, wash our hands of him, and yeah, get in the new player, get Rondon as well, and let's look forward to the season. So yeah, I mean that's my opinion. Marco Anatovic, he's gonna see how it's Greek, he's gonna get some money, he's not gonna have any clubs that remember him fondly and be able to return to any football teams as 
a next player that people respect and admire. He's just going to fade away with his money and not even go somewhere where he could win a trophy. He's going to win these trophies in China, which is less prestigious than the Betway Cup. So good luck to him. If that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave all your comments below. There's so much more I could just go into these into these subjects, they're really big subjects, but um, yeah, this video would go on forever. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to have try and keep these trans videos, I know we say this all the bloody time, regular. And um, yeah, so just do check back. I'm waffling now, Facebook, Twitter, my Twitter, at The Lawless. One thing left to say, come on you irons.